Hello everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome. It's Crystal Ross and I'm back. We did a live stream, but in reviewing it, there was some, it was a bit scattered because I placed where I placed my, um, my mobile device. So, um, we're going to redo it again. I'm going to do an upload for the, I'm going to do a premiere after I'm done. So I'll let you know when it's ready, but um, my reason for coming is thank you to read the Holy Bible to you. This is Eden the Holy Bible on Facebook, and I also am um, broadcasting on YouTube for my um, YouTube adult. This is adult Bible study class, and that means um, we generally read from the NLT. Sometimes we do refer to the KJV. So on Facebook today or tonight, um, I did read from the KJV version of the Holy Bible. I also um, sang a song by Miss Kim Burrell, I believe Dr. Kim Burrell, and the song is I Come to You More Than I Give, and I think it's appropriate, um, with tonight's scripture, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started, tonight we're gonna start with a song, I'm gonna sing a, a little bit of I come to you more than I give, and then we're going to go ahead and get into the Word of God. It is 11.40 p.m. It is 8 20 and it is Thursday. Okay. Let me pull up my lyrics. I don't know where they've gone. Okay. All right, let's begin our song. I come to you more than I give. I come to you more than I give. When the time comes for us to pray, we find other things to say instead of giving thanks for what God has already done. We're asking for more, but with a grateful heart, we ought to pray, Lord, let your will be done. But if you never give me another thing, I just want to thank you for forgiving me. I come to you more than I give. Always with my hands out instead of me lifting them up. Yeah. I come to you more than That's it. <laughs> All right. Y'all can refer to Miss Dr. Kim Burrell on YouTube. I come to you more than I give. And I want to go ahead and get into my reason for coming. And that is to read the Holy Bible to you. I'm going over to the NLT. We read tonight from the KJV. But I that's where I was having um I kind of was getting caught up there because I said, I don't remember it. I don't remember it like this. And it was repeating itself from the night before. Therefore, in which the Bible does that, we see a lot of repetition. And sometimes it throws me off because I'm wondering, are, am I reading the same thing because we need to go for it? But again, it, it repeats itself. Um, the, the word of God. So let's go ahead and get into my reason for coming. Thank you so much for watching. This is Eden the Holy Bible on Facebook and we're on YouTube and we'll go ahead and get started. Reading from Numbers chapter 21. It has insisted on giving me the KJV and I just asked for the NLT. Um, so we're going to go on to the NLT. Thank you. Let's get started. Victory 
over the Canaanites. Victory is mine. Uh -huh, you know, victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan what to get thee behind. So victory today is mine. That's all right. Victory over the Canaanites. Let's go ahead. Sounds like some rejoicing needs to be had. The Canaanite king of Arad, who lived in Najaf, heard that the Israelites were approaching on the road through Atharim. So he attacked the Israelites and took some of them as prisoners. Then the people of Israel made this vow unto the Lord, their God. If you will hand these people over to us, we would have completely destroy all their towns. The Lord heard the Israelites' hmm, request and gave them the victory over the Canaanites or the Canaanites. The Israelites completely destroyed all of them and their towns, and the place has been called Hormah ever since. There's a footnote there. Hormah means destruction. The bronze snake. When the people of Israel set out from Mount Hor, taking the road to the Red Sea, and there's another footnote here. See, it reads, hmm, to go around the land of Adon. That's what they were trying to do, go around. But the people grew impatient with the long journey and they began to speak against God and Moses, their leader. Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die here in the wilderness? Haven't we heard this before? They complained, there is nothing to eat here and nothing to drink. And we hate this horrible manna. So the Lord sent poisonous snakes among the people and they were bitten and many died. Then the people came to Moses again and cried out. Oh, we have sinned uh, by speaking against the Lord and you. Pray that the Lord takes away these snakes. So Moses prayed for the people. Then the Lord told him, make a replica of a poisonous snake and attach it to a pole. All who were bitten will live if they simply look upon it. So Moses made a snake out of bronze and attached it to a pole. Then anyone who was bitten by a snake could look upon the bronze snake and be healed. Israel's journey to Moab. And this is where the story will close. We're going to go ahead and get into the reading. Hang on in there with me. The Israelites traveled next to Obot and camped there. Then they went on to Iye Abarim in the wilderness on the eastern border of Moab. From there, they traveled to the valley of Zered Brook and set up camp. Sounds like a place to get some water. Then they moved out and camped on the far side of the Arnon River. More drink. In the wilderness adjacent to the territories of the Amorites. So they're in the Amorite territory now. Well, adjacent across from. The Arnon is the boundary line between the Moabites and the Amorites. And that's where they were. So they're right in the middle. For this reason, the book of wars of the Lord speaks of the town of Wahab in the area of Sufa in the ravines of the Arnon River. And the ravines that extend as far as the settlement of Ar on the border of Moab. Ravines is water. Place to get water. Place water porch from as far as I understand. From there, the Israelites traveled to Beer. Yes, I said Beer. Spelled the same way. Beer means well, which is the well where the Lord said to Moses, assemble the people here. I will give them water. There, the Israelites sang this song. Spring up. Oh, well, yes. Sing its praises. Sing of this well, which princes dug. With great leaders hollowed out and with their scepters and staffs. Then the Israelites left the wilderness and proceeded on through Matanah, Nahaliel, and, Bamoth, and Bamoth. After that, they went into the valley of Moab, where Pisgah peaks overlooks the wasteland. So they left the wilderness and proceeded to Matanah, then to Mahalil, and to Bamoth. 
And after that, they were in the valley of Moab, where peace got peaks. Those are mountains overlooks the wastelands. I want to know more about those wastelands. The wasteland. Let's see. So there's a footnote there. It says, or overlooks Jeshimon. You will hear that again. I believe. Victory over Sihon and Og. The Israelites sent ambassadors to King Sihon, representatives of themselves, of the Amorites with this message. So they sent a message to the king of Sihon. Let us travel through your land. We will be careful not to go through your fields and your vineyards. We won't even drink wata from your wells. We will stay on the king's road until we've passed through your territory. Verse 23, but King Sihon refused to let them cross his territory. Instead, he mobilized his entire army and attacked Israel in the wilderness, engaging them in battle at Jahaz, so the place of Jahaz. But the Israelites slaughtered them with their swords and occupied their land from Arnon River to the Jabok, Jabok, Jabok River. They went only as far as the Ammonite border because the boundary of the Ammonites was fortified. So they only got up into, up into the Ammonites border. It says, or because the terrain of the Ammonite frontier was rugged. Hebrew reads, because the boundary of the Ammonites was strong and repetition good. Verse 25, so Israel, so Israel captured all the towns of the Amorites and settled in them. Oh, we have new houses. They didn't burn them down. We have new houses, new land. You will have houses that you did not build, including the city of Heshbon and its surrounding villages. Heshbon had been the capital of King Sihon. Sihon of the Amorites. He had defeated a former Moabite king and seized all of his land as far as the Arnon River. So they were accustomed to taking land in, from others by war, by fighting. Therefore, the ancient poets wrote this about him. Come to Heshbon and let it be rebuilt. Let the city of Sihon be restored. A fire flameth forth from Heshbon, a blaze from the city of Sihon. It burned the city of Ar in Moab. It destroyed the rulers of the Arnon Heights. What sorrow awaits you, O people of Moab. You're finished, O worshippers of Chemosh. Sounds like a god. Chemosh has left his sons in refu as refugees. His daughters as captives of Sihon, the Amorite king. We have utterly destroyed them from Heshbon to Debon. We have completely wiped them out as far as Mopha and Medeba. Verse 31, and we're almost done. So the people of Israel occupied the territory of the Amorites. After Mose sent men to explore the Jazer area, they captured all the towns in the region and drove out the Amorites who lived there. Then they turned and marched up the road to Bashan. But King Og of Bashan and all his people attacked them, the Israelites, at Edri, E-D-R-E-I. The Lord said to Moses, do not be afraid of him, for I have handed him over to you, along with all his people and his land. Do the same to him as you did to King Sihon and the Amorites who ruled in Heshbon. The king it, and Israel killed, excuse me, King Og, his sons, and all his subjects. Not a single survivor remained. That, ooh, my goodness. Then Israel occupied their land. So they took their land too. So now we have um, the Israelites have occupied the territory. That, so the people of Israel occupied the territory of the Amorites. And then we have, it looks like they took over. And then. Excuse me, that does conclude the reading of scripture. It's 11.52 p.m. It's 8.20, 20, 20, 20, and it's Thursday. And it's time to get into the commentation and summarization portion of this hill chapter. And what I'm doing now is trying to see the last land that they conquered and left off at for tonight's word. And it looks like we're in Heshbon. So, and that would be, uh, then they turn and march up. The road to Bashan, but King, but King Og of Bashan and all his people attacked them at Edri. And the Lord said, do not be afraid of him. And he handed him over along with all his people and his land. And do the same to King Sahang of the Amorites who ruled in Heshbon. So he took two kings. 
king, the king of Sihon, the king of Og. That's pretty awesome. I feel like checkers. It's like king me. All right. So, so what I want to do now is talk a little bit about, as I've said before, if you go to Facebook, you will see that I read from the KJV and how it's a little bit different in the NLT. And I feel that my discernment is that with more knowledge, they were able to add some more information um, about the journey. So what that is, is they probably look more into it and it's just a little more descriptive in the passage. So that's not that's not a bad thing to do. Um, but the title here of tonight's word, I put. Uh, I've got something for all that complaining, and that was snakes. Um, the Lord sent snakes to bite the people. And with that being said, snake bites are poisonous, and snake bites can kill. And we all know that without a remedy. Um, what I will say, excuse me, was that the remedy here was that God said, okay, so the people came and repented for talking, speaking against God and his servant Moses. And then he said, will you pray? For, he said, they, they begged actually Moses to pray for them. Moses obliged and the Lord said, take a pole and put a bronze snake upon it. When the people look upon it, they will not die. This takes faith. You have to believe in God if you want to be healed or die. That's another, um, that's another thing that we learned here. We are seeing uh, the Israelites um, conquering lands for their for themselves, houses, people. They've taken it all, and they are singing praises unto the Lord their God. So they're they're moving in one accord here, and we see what happens when you stand together. In faith, and when when you do, when you're fighting for the Lord, and when when you're fighting for the Lord, and you're doing what He asks. Excuse me. So all of that, we want to go back. All that complaining. This is really a lesson for us, and the lesson is, it what well, my what I what I gather is. No time for complaining because we, we, we got somewhere to, we got to be. We got somewhere to go. We, what I promised you, I'm trying to, I, what I promised you, I'm taking you there. So I, don't frustrate, don't anger me to where I have to punish you. All right. And in that, I would say, well, what's the opposite of complaining? And that is to be grateful. And and like I said before, if they wanted something else different to eat, just ask. Just ask. Just ask. In my name. Oh. Oh. Just ask. Just, just, just as it's gonna be all right in my name. All right, so that's a song. All things are possible in my name, oh, to do the impossible with what in my name. So, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead. I think that does conclude. Uh, everything else was very straightforward as far as the lands. And what I'm going to do for Facebook, and I'm going to try to post it on this page for YouTube, is their journey. Where we are in the Word of God and what they've captured, what lands they've captured. So what we're going to see is their route 
and where we're leaving off for tonight's work. I want to go ahead and close out with prayer. So let's um, bow our heads, pray if we can. Excuse me. Lord, we thank you so much for the word on tonight. We thank you for the gathering of your people. We thank you so much um, for what we have learned and gleaned uh, from your word. We know more. We thank you that your word says to study, to show yourself approved as a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And I thank you so much for the NLT version, God. It makes it so much more e fun for us. And I thank you that you cared enough about it. To reach everyone. And um, just asking for peace and for healing and uh, for love and everything that everybody who's watching, they need that they get it, oh Lord, from you. And that they get it. And, and, I, and I just thank you so much for, for the broadcast and for what your love does for others through your word. God, we thank you. And we love you and we will obey you and trust you. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. Amen. I will see you all again um, next time on Eating the Holy Bible. Well, we will um, go on to, we'll be in Numbers chapter 22. So tomorrow, be ready. I'll see you all then. Good night. Thank you for watching.